<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, good evening, good evening, and welcome back to another season. I don't know if it's a season, but at least a show of Supernova Quarantine Session, Saturday Night Quarantine. How are we doing tonight, ladies and gentlemen? We have the spliff toting, dub rocking, bass playing, engineer making music man of the hour on the show. That is you, Victor. That's Mr. You. Ranks. Mr. Yes. Ranks. You're too kind. <laughs> too I'm gonna kind. tell you, I'm gonna tell you something, man. It's really good to see you. It's really yes. good to see you. Yes. And I'm cheers, gonna tell you, I cheers to you too, Victor. I, not I, water, I, not water. No, this is wine, and that is this is not Kool-Aid. And that right. is vodka. I have not seen you. I want to I want to say at least 20 years. Right? About 20 years you departed from New York City. Maybe maybe earlier than that. Well, uh uh I kind of disappeared in New while I was still in New York. I kind of yeah. disappeared because I started working for TV. Oh. Composing and stuff. That was in 99. Okay. But um uh, then I left in '02, okay, and been here ever since. So yeah, it's been a while, man. It's been too long. So where are you? Um, I don't know if everybody knows where you are. Where are you right now? São Paulo, Brazil. Uh, uh, there are uh, 20 million people yeah. in this place, yeah. and it reminds me of New York. I decided. Like when I, I knew I wanted to leave New York. I knew I wanted to leave the States. Yeah. And I had my eyes on cities in Europe. But when I, when Bucket from Toasters asked, he's like, oh, I need a bass player in Brazil next week. It's like, two, I'm there. And, and, I, and this was in 1998. And I was like, wow, the downtown Sao Paulo reminds me of New York when Dinkins was the mayor. Before mm. before Rudy came in and fucked it all up, mm. Mm. the '80s in New York I thought were nice. Mm. I liked it, mm. and 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 it was it was the only city that I found as much diversity in the people as uh, uh, as we have in New York. So it was an easy fit, and no snow doesn't get cold. <laughs> Palm trees. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like my kind of place. It was easy. I'm gonna go back a little bit more because maybe. I'm not sure who knows you that's watching us right now. But for me, my introduction to you, my first introduction to you was when you were playing bass with the Scott Bros. That's, yeah. that's how I met you. And hands down, you were the most nicest person, calmest person. Like you just had a very cool aura about you. You're even down to your playing. Do you remember I always used to be like, yo, I need you in my band. Because <laughs> I am a pilferer, you know, I pilfer. So, uh, you know, but, 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 like, it's got to be said that when the pilfers, like, appeared, it fucked everything up. It was like, that was very special time. Thank and you. it was probably the most creative thing to come out of those times because around then things were getting very, there were some, like, attempts at commercializing and, and you know, and there, there, were, there were things there were people running after what they thought would sell. And, and, and I just felt like, all right, sure, it was ska, but it was rock, but it was, it was the execution that, <laughs> that, that made the pilfers like, oh, I'm glad I'm here tonight, you know? Thank you, thank you. Thank you, man, it was great. You, I, 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 saw, I saw your work and I was a, a fan immediately. I didn't know how to get you into my circuit. I was like, I, I begged, and you just disappeared. So I mean, I mean, I'm not, I'm not heartbroken. I'm not bitter, you know. But you just disappeared, and you reemerged as this force. I mean, I, I hear about you to people that I've met from Brazil. They didn't even know I knew you. They're like, Oh, do you know Victor Rice? Because I told them I do Scott. I said, Oh yeah, I know Victor Rice. So your name started to travel from there to here. I'm like, So what is what's Victor up to? Can you tell us what you've been up to for the past 20 years? Also? Wow. Wow. Okay. Let's okay. Go. Let's go there. So the, one of the, the final straws, uh, the straw that broke the camel's back for me was that I had been working for a couple of years for um, a, a studio doing television production. 
And I was composing, doing sound design, recording voiceover, mixing, mostly mixing. Hmm. And I finally paid off my student loan. I finally like paid off my debts. And, and it was the first time in my life I had like a bank account and, and everything. And there was just something in it, you know, and, 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 uh, Things got comfortable, but they were a little too stressed out. I don't know. It was like I had already discovered Brazil, and I was really like, you know, I want to get there. I want to get there. And and um, I guess the straw that broke the camel's back was nine eleven. Mm. Uh, I was. Mm. We were all watching in the lobby of because the, the studio was an entire floor of a building in Midtown, and we were all gathered around a big plasma screen and watching it all go down and everyone's quiet until like noon there's like nothing going on when all of a sudden i was the only one with a client that day and she was like so are we gonna work or not i was like uh, i don't know are we she's like let's, let's do something i mean let's, what, what can we do let's work like, all right even the owner of the studio was like, dude, if you want me to take the session, it's cool. I understand. I was like, no, nah, what, what the fuck's the difference? Let's work. And, and she was getting more and more annoyed as the day progressed. By about 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, when it was time for her to, like, hightail at home while I finish a project alone, which is the, you know, what we do. Um, she's, like, talking to the phone. She's like, the nanny went home to, to see her kids. The bridges are closed. She's not sure how she's going to get back. And then she slams. Then she calls operations at NBC. She's like, oh, what's going on? No one's answering. No one's answering at NBC. She slams the phone. She's like, this whole day is so inconvenient. That's the word she used. And I'm thinking inconvenient mm -hmm. for you. What's the word for the survivors? 3,000 people we just watched die, you know? And, and, and I was like, I'm so fucking out of here. And then, and then I, I, I kept it cool. I knew I had some other debts to pay. I stayed until February, paid everything off, gave notice, got the fuck out. Came here. I had nothing to do. But I had friends. I already had friends. And I just I found this place. And I lived here before it became my studio. Um, and every six months, I went back to New York to work like an immigrant. You know, was, I, I, uh, um, I had excellent contacts because my leaving this company was not a threat to them because I wasn't leaving for another company. I was just getting the fuck out, you know? And, and so they were like, yeah, well, whenever you're in New York, come work for us, you know? And, and that went on and on. So for about six years, I had work in New York and I would come back and do it because I had nothing in Brazil. I, I wasn't here because I had something going on and nothing going on. I was happy. I was just fucking glad to be here learning portuguese finding the reggae parties just it was like um it, it was an amazing time it was an amazing time for me and it still is still is but by 2010 uh, i was no longer working for people in new york and i was mostly working for people in brazil once in a while stuff coming in from europe or the states and the sky thing but no more tv like I, I had already spent all, all the money I made from TV. I, I spent make bought all this shit. What you call and, it? And brought, I bought it in New York and flew it back here, like personally, piece by piece, and like up, up. You know, it's just That's, completely. Does it have a name? The name of the building is famous here. It's called Copan, C O P A N. So I've called the studio Studio Copan. It's like the biggest residence in South America. It's very Blade Runner. It's very beautiful and uh, postmodern or futuristic, post-apocalyptic fortress <laughs> style of building. It's <laughs> awesome. Great. And um, and that's it. As as of like I'd say about 2010, yeah. I, I stopped renting studios to work. Uh, I had my place. I had my stuff. Stop buying stuff. I got all the stuff I need. And I just make records too. So and you've, been I make making it you've been making records since you left though, right? I, I never stopped making records. So uh, uh, I just, but it was for whom, right? Because yeah. uh, 
I made a record for myself in 2002. And it was started in New York and finished in Sao Paulo. So it was like a real like transition. It tells the story of my, you know, it's an instrumental that tells my story of my move to Brazil. It's called In America. And then I did no record for 15 years. Like I didn't do my stuff. I, I immersed myself in other people's music, paying the bills, yeah. engineering, producing, paying the bills, paying the bills. And then finally I got into a place where I was like, ah, I need to do my thing again. And that was like in 2017. So you're, you're back on the reggae scene though, almost, mostly dub, right? Oh yeah, like like during all this time, I've been doing dubs, and and the people that seek me out in Brazil are the are the reggae heads, are, are the ones that know, you know, like uh, uh, what I've been involved in, and 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 they they, they they recognize my work. Yeah. So I get a lot of reggae heads coming at me from from everywhere, but also there was something like like there was some pop musician in brazil that asked me to mix their record and the assistant engineer was like dude from here on in everyone's going to be calling you it's not wow. just going to be reggae heads it's going to be like people whatever and you start they're like now they know you're open to anything and 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 that's it man when as an engineer i don't um it's funny what you said you like like you said when we met and we, we were hanging out I was like the most tranquil, peaceful dude yes, man. in the crew. But yes, that's because that's because I was when we met, I was already I was in conservatory playing orchestral string bass, <laughs> taking shit mega seriously. And everything I had to do with ska was for pleasure. And it wasn't like for me it was like it was like my my holiday. And then and then I had to make a decision when I got out of school. I was like I, I choose the holiday, man. I I, I I I got out of orchestral music. I got out of playing string bass, and 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 I got out of like the playing other people's music thing. And I was like, no, 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 fuck it. I'm having too much fun playing ska, you know. So when you did, I'm gonna we're gonna go to some of your videos in a second. But you've got records here, foundation records here with, with seven all stars. Yeah. Uh, Excellent thing to happen, man. With the stubborn all stars, because uh, me and Jeff, we we always related to each other because we were a little older than everyone else in what was becoming the scene. We we're the same age, hmm. and we also both studied music, and we were both kind of like he appreciated my the 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 the, the musical bitch side of me. You know, like like the, the 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 one that was like, no, that shit's wrong. It's just wrong. You know, and 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 he was like, yeah, man, that shit's wrong. That shit's wrong. And, and so so we had that. You know. Okay. We're gonna uh, we're gonna run to a video. Hold on a second. Hold, hold okay. on a second. We're gonna run to one of your videos. Um, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna come right back. Check out um, seven more songs we're gonna play. Yeah, we're gonna play. Awesome. Some awesome. Some awesome. Oh, why we can't why we can't do uh okay sip it. Play all sides. and we'll be right back you know what? i'm gonna have a little sip of this wine cheers to I'm my sticking man. Out. all right gotta, i'm gonna see some of the comments too i have i don't see any comments in front of me but i'm gonna take a look at them me neither. And check out the videos and we'll be right back and i'll see if i can answer some of your questions cheers All right. Well, uh, uh, Leanne, who we're very happy to have on, uh, they're mm. going to be doing this song, uh, Tin Spam, from their album Open Season. Please welcome from New York City, <coughs> the Stubborn All-Stars. <laughs> Behind 
though they don't quite fit them like they used to. Things going by so fast.
ladies and gentlemen, we're back here on the Supernova Saturday night quarantine sessions. I don't know if we're still quarantined anymore. We're kind of quarantined, but we're not really quarantined anymore, I don't think. I'm quarantined. Think you're quarantined? Oh, What's yeah. Going over there? Oh. You're quarantined over there? Man, I've been quarantined since 2018. I just, <laughs> I had, I just I broke my house to my studio and I go back and me and my woman hang out with the cats. And then the next day we do it all over again. And maybe you're in beautiful. bliss. Maybe you're in bliss. You're not in quarantine. It's been okay for me. You know what? It's interesting. I watched during the quarantine, I've watched a lot of people become very creative, yes. creating a lot of content. Love you. I see some people doing some amazing creations now that they have the time or yes. whatever it is. Yes. But, but, but I noticed for me, I'm, I've seen a more of an upsurge in working as an engineer I've mm. been, because everyone wants their projects done and everyone's starting to embrace the internet. And I'm down here with fiber optic waiting for people to be like, yo, let's work. And I'm like, yeah, I'm here since 2002 saying let's work, you know? And, and now, and now for me, like it's been, uh, ironically positive and, but, but I, my creative flow has like all but stopped. Like I personally, I personally, yeah, I'm working. I think uh, I miss touring because um, one of the side effects of touring, especially on the European continent, one of the side effects of touring is that I'm out of my domestic routine. Um, and, and on my days off, I can, I, I'm inspired to do a lot of writing. I, I, I hear a lot of things. I, 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 you know, I get inspired from the gigs, inspired from, from the positivity in the shows, and then and, and I start writing music. So I haven't been very productive creatively mm. in quarantine. Like it's like almost a dry spell, but mm. I'm working my ass off and I'm totally grateful, totally lucky, totally privileged. Let's call it what it is true, to true. be working. And, and, and already, I already kind of isolated myself from the world um, um, before this all happened. So, so I'm good. I'm good to so is it is it rampant over there or is it is it just like in certain sections you have COVID? Or is it just like everywhere have is I mean because we live, we were restricted from moving. We couldn't even come out of our houses. Like for okay. three months we were locked like it was like we were in prison for like three months. I would walk excuse me, I would walk on the streets at night or in the daytime. And there was no one on the street in Manhattan. No one. You could walk on forty second street and there's no one there. Well, I think what happened in New York is different than what happened in Sao Paulo because we had some, it's like, they definitely call it quarantine. They said stay home and, you know, don't be out if you're not going somewhere. And uh, um, that went on for maybe three, four weeks. Now it's relaxed. But what happened in New York was this, like, police angle of, like, wanting to flex they wanted mm -hmm. to flex their authority on the streets. So it became a, a totally different dynamic than just mm -hmm. the pandemic. It was like, we're going to flex and you better whatever. And yep. Fucked up. Yeah, we got that. We didn't, we didn't have that down here. But, but I mean, we both, like both Brazil and the United States have clowns for presidents that their job is to make you so angry you forget about global warming. That's their mm. job to make you so angry that we never talk about how Goldman Sachs is printing our money since 2008. We never talk about uh, 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 the destruction of the planet. We never hold corporations to account for because we're too busy being pissed off at the, the, the clown shit that Boris Johnson, uh, 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 Trump, Bolsonaro, like they were paid that they're, they're doing their jobs. They're doing it well. Hats off, mm -hmm. man, because... Mm -hmm. That, you know, they're serving their masters mm. brilliantly mm -hmm. uh, or their masters chose people who are naturals, right? Yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you. But, I agree but, with that people are doing their jobs. This is their job, regardless to 
yeah, what if we may we don't understand it, you know. the order, it's because we're not informed, you know, wow. and, 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 it, and it's painful to be intelligent and uninformed and oh. know that the unintelligent and informed got the upper hand. And that's something we have to live with. I wrote this new song, man. You got to hear it. It's called All Them I Try. I wrote it a long time ago, but it speaks to what you're saying. I just, I just released this. It's some next thing. Sounds, sounds kind of like Pilvers, but it's me. Um, let, me, let, me let me go into one quick thing. I started this thing, and I didn't, I didn't get into it, but I can talk to them at the, at the end. You were, you were working with the Stubborn All-Stars, and, and who else? Because I just seen that, that video there. You was really young. <laughs> I, I couldn't even recognize that was a Jeff. Like, he was a slim young man. And Vic looked really, uh, look, Vic looked like a baby. So uh, what, what, I don't know what year, and what show was that? Where was that? It's like a TV show. It kind of looked like uh, Mr. Rogers and shit. Yeah, I forget the name of the show. <laughs> but I think it was on Comedy Central or something, or the Comedy Channel, or something that like became whatever it is now. Yeah. The year was like 98, I think. Yeah. And there was, it was definitely the year where I thought that um, uh, people were trying to sell the scout. They were trying to commercialize it. They were trying to make, they thought there was a chance that this thing would make money. Uh. In my opinion, there weren't enough bands to back it up. Good bands. You think so? Well, so, I thought, yeah, in, I thought I, in the I, 90s, I thought in the 90s we had like the best creative bands. Agreed. You understand what I'm saying? I like, they, they, Everyone had their own style. Yeah. Everyone had their own style. They sounded like themselves. They didn't sound like, oh, let me be, let me be a carbon copy of this band. Like everyone had their own thing that they was doing, and it was just like, that's it. This is New York sound. This is Pilfer sound. This is DC sound. This is Midwest sound. Everyone likes doing their own thing. I I loved it. Man. It was such it was such a creative time to mixed with these artists that were doing it like that and it just it just inspires you to be even better you know anyway yeah. enough about enough about me and my recollections um <laughs> that was us man that was a uh, noise uh, really insane and noise and triple it's us we're talking about and noise and noise and say it again and noise and noise that means that's us I, I'm quick with, with accents and, and things like that. I just have to know it, repeat it a couple of times. And noise, that's us. And noise. And noise, thank you. That's a little bit of Brazilian there, people. You got that? And noise, that means that's us. <laughs> I'm flexing! <laughs> so the, you, you got yourself spliff over there. I see you spliffed out, you, you vodka out. Is it legal over there? It is? Uh, it's tolerated. Finally, it's it's probably about as well tolerated as it is in New York. Okay. Well, in the states, um, yeah, not illegal to have, illegal to buy, illegal to sell. But if you already got it, there, you know. But let's be. So I'm sorry to keep going heavy on this. It's like every time you give me a it's nice okay. like, question, but I'm a white man. I don't have these problems. If somebody wants to mess with an African. They will say, do you got pot on you? And they'll turn it into a thing and blah, 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 blah. Um, so, so who am I to say how it is? I don't know. Oh, I see. I see. I gotcha. Yeah, yeah. I mean. I got, yeah. I got a question for you. It says, a question for Victor. Will you do anything again with a rock of tea? And that came from Lou Riddell. I would love to work with rock of tea again. He, we created, he created, he and Agent J, I was in on it, but he and Agent J made the most of, of that little studio on Third Street, Version City. They, they took it to the limits. It was, it was the uh, Sergeant Pepper of the studio. And working with him is always energizing. Um, he's got discipline, but he's laid back. You know, he's creative, but he's technically proficient. You know, it's like that, you know, he comes in, everyone wants to work 
like he works harder than anybody. So who are we to say about, or who are we to talk about 16 hour days when he's there for all of it, you know, right? right? So, so I love working with, with T. Okay, I got another one here it says, I wanna know which project Rice worked on that is the most proud of because of them, that because he has been involved with some heavies. So which is the, the most, the, the most, the project that you're most proud of because you've worked with some heavy hitters? Um, there are coming from Matt Wixton. Matt, pick up yourself, Matt. Sorry. Who was that? Matt Wixton. Matt Wixton, yeah. All right. What's up, Matt? Dude, thanks for the question. That's a great question. All right. Um, oh, and I'm owing you a, 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 an appearance on the podcast. I'm sorry for the Horn Pub like delay I'm, I'm doing and i'm sorry like like you jj horn pub is the name of the block i, I want to big them up is it horn pub no it's it turned it's horn pub there's a horn pub yes yeah brilliant whoever did the design the, the whole horn hub fight was brilliant anyway <laughs> I will show up. sorry i'm late um all right both projects that i think of immediately are uh had the scatolites and one and one became the other because the first one was I was given tapes. You remember Shay? Yeah, what you? I saw Shay two days ago. Dude, really? Yeah. Oh, so I love man. He he is. I love Shay. My, my he's been in my corner, like the whole the whole time. He's Shay is in everyone's God, corner. That's Shay, man. Bad. Big up Shay Wanka. Big up <laughs> Shay V. So so. Shay asked me to uh, mix uh, this record with the Scatolites and Laurel Aiken that they mm. made in England at the end of their tour together. Mm. The end of their European tour together, they made this record. I get it. The sessions are okay. Like, there's some strangeness about the sessions. But what really worried me was that the state of the tape itself was falling apart. We're mixing this at Coyote Studios. I said, look, I got to make decisions like faster without listening because every time we pass the tape, we lose pieces oh, of the yeah. high end. Like, like every time we played the tape, there was gunk on the tape heads that we had to clean off and all those gunks what was is is a uh, high end like that's what was missing every time we played it we lost high end with the clean tape machine so i'm like all right i gotta make decisions dude and, and, and so we did it we did it and there was one tune i'm in the mood for skia simply because you're near me mm -hmm. and brevet the bass player yeah i remember every, brevet lloyd brevet every last four bars of the bridge he played a different harmony than the rest of the band <laughs> and i was like Dude, I, I don't know i think i can't let this go so i recorded every time the bridge came in i recorded myself playing bass pretending to doing my brevet imitation on, on a bass guitar and and uh for four bars i, I printed the right you know, because I had played in wedding bands like a million times. No, I'm yeah. in the mood for love. Yeah, Come yeah. on. So did it, fixed it, mixed it, and, and did the rest of the record. And, and, and there was a lot of a lot of physical repair to be done. Performances were cool, but there was a weird vibe. I found out later doing the tour, I was in the Scott Jazz Ensemble, New York Scott Jazz, and we were backing up Laurel Aiken. And we're talking about that record. And I said, yeah, I mixed that. He goes, yeah, well, okay. I was like, yeah, it was, it was, he's like, how was it? I was like, it wasn't easy, dude. You know, and he's like, dude, we were fighting the whole time. There was problems. We, we, the last thing we wanted to do at the end of the tour was make a record. We were fighting the whole time. I was like, oh, man, okay, not my problem. I don't want to know about it. And then, and then, uh, uh, I said there was there was one discrepancy that I could hear on the record, and then I had to fix it with myself. I'm in the mood for skia. I was like, you know, the last four bars of the bridge weren't right in the bass. He's like, dude, 
we fought about that <laughs> for hours. <laughs> all tour, all, all month, and then at the studio, it was a fight from the beginning between me and Brevet. I was like, he was wrong. Like, thank you. Thank you. He's like so happy to hear he was like vindicated, right? Yeah, yeah. He was right. And he sang it even with him. And with, he, all I had to do was fix the bass. And it was like, whoa. It sounds sweet. So yeah. that's one. That's part yeah. one. Part two part one. is because I did that, Shay called me in to play on Ball of Fire, uh, the Skylights record, Ball of Fire. And I replaced about half the, the tracks. Wow. Because he knew I could do brevet better than. <laughs> I just did what he did, but yeah. he had lost his pitch hand. Yeah. But his, his right hand, his attack, I yeah. could never like emulate because he never lost that. It was something brilliant. His, the groove is his. And I yeah. did my best to imitate that with just like perfect little. Did you do it with an upright or? or... I used his bass. You used his bass? He left it in the studio. He was like, yeah, my roadie. What? Come for that. He was like, yeah, my roadie come for that. He was gone. He what? Was gone. And they were like, yeah, come on in. And they, they called me in like, in the middle of the <laughs> they're like, he's done. He's done. His bass is still here. Come on down. Sony oh, studios. my God. It's like, it, for me, I was like, the rest of my life is going to be like this. Any photos? Any photos? Any videos? Never. It was never like that. It was never again. No photos like 96, like 98, around there, when shit was crazy. And, and, and uh, um, I don't know if you ever went through this, but you, 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 ever, you ever like move up a level and you're like, now I'm here, now it's gonna be like this all the time. And it's not, it. it's like, you know, like I got to play bass with Desmond Decker. I was like, on tour with Desmond Decker for four weeks. When I got that gig, I was like, oh, it's going to be like this all the time now. No, no, these are like the greatest moments you know. of your life. Yeah. And at the time, I'm like, yeah, this is cool, man. This is like, you know, this is what I'm here for. This is what you're supposed to be doing. Be. And then, and, well, yeah, we, sometimes we forget to. Well, I, I, I tell moment. you what, though, but now you see, after those guys have passed on and moved on, now we're those guys. You understand what I'm saying? Like we put in our work. I remember my first like major tour was with the, the Scatterlights, Selector, Special Beat, English Beat, um, and and um, the the Toasters when I was in the Toasters, right? So now, you put in time you know, these me. guys. Sorry, you put in time before me. You you were already doing it. I I've been putting in time. I don't know how much you. I think we're, we're around the same thing. I think we're around. The I, same was doing, thing. I was doing. I was doing time in conservatory. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I mean, those those so those people who were like the people of our time who were the greatest, who still are. Some of them are still around. Those people will leave the legacy and leave the responsibility unto us. That's our job now. So it's our job now to bring up the younger ones and give them a life and uh, and you know a platform of their own and i've seen you've been doing that you i i, I gotta jump in there with one second the band that you got you you've you've been doing a lot of dub stuff sorry my ears are funny you've been doing a lot of dub stuff and one band in particular that i heard like i interviewed them yesterday you did their record and that's the the love and purpose out of dc crazy crazy dude crazy i saw another dub band that i just saw them today on your page but i just happened to hear that you did the love and purpose record it was in an interview yesterday i did with them and i was like uh oh vic knows <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like vic vic knows <laughs> vic knows he don't tell <laughs> you're doing well but, Vic. But, doing. but man I, I i have so much like interest uh uh um what's the word like ulterior motives yeah. when i think of the loving paupers because i know jorge jorge yeah 
like from before that. And yeah. I knew he was a good songwriter and I always liked what he did. Yeah. And he always liked what I did. So I keep like bugging him, like, let me wait until I'm in town before you record the next one. You know, I don't like where the microphone was on the drum kit. Mm. Let me, you know, cause my job has been to mix, but um, uh, I've been invited to, to listen to the rehearsal tapes and say, you know, a couple of BPMs in this direction. Um, you know, I've, I've talked a lot with, you know, Curtis, the drummer, and I have yeah. I've talked a bunch about um, um, the approach and, and, and what I was looking to do in the mix. And, and um, I think, um, he, I think sometimes he gets frustrated in the band, but uh, he's so good. And then he hears the record and then he's like, it is good, man. You know, and, and like, 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 you know, he's somebody who's always on the fence about like, I you know, know Curtis very well. I know Curtis very well. We've toured, we toured for like a, uh, one, one, uh, one summer with the Pythases down to Florida. We have, we have history. We have a good history. I want to meet but him. I know. Oh, he's a good dude. He, he, he can be high strong. He can be high strong. That's but, my people. But that's a drummer. He, and that's why he bangs the crap out of those, those, uh, those drums. He gets the sound. He's, right. he's a strong dude and he, he gets those sounds. Oh, yeah. Steady. Oh, yeah. Steady dude. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm running up my mouth. We got two more videos to come and we'll come back with Vic. Sorry this about that, great, man. This is let's let's. I'm enjoying. We're gonna it. go past. We're gonna go past the hour because I mean it says we got nine more minutes. We're gonna go past that. We're gonna continue I'm, to talk. I'm here for you, Mr. Ranks. Thank you, sir. Mr. Thank Ranks you, sir. in the house. You remember TC? <laughs> of course. Yes. Family. Yes, Mr. Ranks in the Family. house. Family. Definitely. <laughs> we're gonna come right back here with more, Mr. Victor Rice. We're gonna watch some videos here. Hold tight. A lot of mercy, yeah. Cause I bought a word Who 
And ladies and gentlemen, we are back here on the Saturday Night Quarantine Supernova Sessions. I'm, I'm still trying to figure out if we are on the quarantine. I don't think we're under quarantine anymore. I'm able to move about in New York City. And um, <clears throat> yeah, yeah I've, been, I've been to Connecticut several times. I've been out of state. Um, you know, I can take the trains. You just have to wear a mask now. Smart. Well, I, they say it's good. <clears throat> There's always some type of fiber that comes out of the damn mask. So I don't know how good it is, how bad it is, but I, I just make sure I protect myself and, and people around me. Um, so you've done the pauper's. What other bands <clears throat> that you have, have you done that you're taking a look out for, that we should look out for? Wow. It's hard for me to, uh, uh, because you, you could, you could pinpoint the poppers, right? The loving poppers. Yeah. And say that that's a great band. Is there any bands that you've worked with now that you think, you know, we should listen to? Cause I do, a, I do another thing here besides supernova. I play music in my car. I call it the car sessions. <laughs> right. I'm familiar. I'm familiar. Okay, cool. So I need to know what music, cause you are an engineer and a lot of people come through your, your, um, your studio. So what music do you, musicians or music songwriter or singer or solo, who do you think I should look out for that I can start playing? Excellent question. All right. Thank you. I'm going to try not to like look at my hard drives for the last sessions. And <laughs> I'm, I'm under the influence. <laughs> There's one guy I really like in New Jersey. Okay. Alex T. He had a band called Kiwi. I, I released something on my label, Total Running Time, from his band. We work all the time. I'm really interested in in his latest music because I think he's got something uh, uh, that will transcend genre. And that's what we're looking for. As musicians, we work with, inside a genre, but we want to create that song mm -hmm. that transcends genre that yeah. just spills over because it's so good it's so right because yeah. because they the musicians got it right and the and the lyricists got it right and alex and, t yeah okay. yeah you heard that you heard that ladies and gentlemen i will be playing alex t on on monday i gotta find his music you can you can send me some waves yeah, man, I, 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 yeah, I'll hook you up with anything. Please, I'm gonna. I'm, that's gonna be on, on Monday's cat. car sessions. I met him here in São Paulo, no way. and he speaks fluent Portuguese. He's he's like a capoeirista. He's he's okay. Does that capoeiro. like martial arts? Yeah, yes. Teaches it, you know. He's like a martial artist, Brazilian martial artist from. He's a Russian. He's a Russian that moved <laughs> to, to the states. <laughs> that, that that became a martial artist in Brazil. And he's all of this and like, he's too much. He's too much, man. Anyway. Can I, can I tell you, there's, there's somebody in New York that could be your brother or your little brother. And he, he looks like you. Like, when I'm looking at you, I'm, I'm seeing such the resemblance of you and him. Who? Brett Tubin. Do you know Brett? Oh, dude, totally. I get he that. looks, he could I be your brother. That. He could be your little brother. I get that. And he's nice like you. And he's I mean, an engineer and he's a bass player. That's your twin over there. You know who I'm talking about, right? Yeah, I was living on Riverside Drive, 112th Street, graduated, living there, just woodshedding, playing bass like six hours a day, blah, 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 giving lessons. And Brett showed up. And he, like, grokked what I was doing Oops. in like 94 or something. I, I, he, did, he like totally appreciated and got it, but it was, wasn't just like the bass lesson. He kind of yeah. understood like how to, uh, uh, man, it's real. It's a real thing. Like how to position yourself. Uh, 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 your your posture in society, how you you, you uh, uh, approach people, you know, and why you approach people, and 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 he got it. 
You fucking got it. Long. He had like two, three lessons and he was already sounding like me. <laughs> Is that already? I'm gone. Oh, man, fuck off. <laughs> another <laughs> one, another one who like two or three sessions with me and he's already like getting t- taking my jobs. It was uh, Sheldon, Sheldon Gregg. Oh. That motherfucker is a brilliant, <laughs> brilliant, beautiful cat. You know him. You know Sheldon. I, I I know the name. I know the name. I think I think something happened the other he's day. He's a monster of a bass player, man. He's like they, keep, he's, they told he's, me about like, Sheldon. That's he's, right. He's the bass player in Stubborn All Stars. When we talk about like, I was there from the beginning, but he was the one like who really got like in that last record we did. All I, the only tunes I played were the ones on on the string bass. And Sheldon covered the rest. He's he's one of those guys who took like two or three lessons from me and was like, got it. Oh my God. <laughs> I got what I was here for. Yeah. And fucking killed it. Man, the dude kills it. And when he plays with when Sheldon Gregg plays with Eddie Ocampo, it's Eddie. fucking magic. It's fucking Eddie. man. When those two guys do it. And I'm like there watching, you know, and, and but that's and, how I saw you and Eddie. I saw you and Eddie like uh, that. Yeah, me and Eddie, man. It's like I, it's the best I got. It's it's like, you know, he's. I beg that guy too. I beg all you guys, man. Oh he's God. Like Asian J. He's like Asian J. Asian like, J is another one. Asian J is incredible. He's like he knows what I want. He he knows what I like. We both like the same thing. We both been through the same shit. Very particular micro shit, mm. musically and technically, working it out at Version City. Jay, these people like Jay, uh, 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 Dave Hahn. Dave uh, Hahn. Dude, Matt Malice. Matt uh, Malice. Yes, yes. I know. Matt Malice. Matt Maliwa. Can we talk about Dub 50 to 56 now? Can we talk 56 now? Can we talk about 56 now? <laughs> for me, for me, the best um, incarnation of the toasters. Mind you, I did not know the toasters before that whole bullshit with the, the label that took the singers. Oh. Yes. You yes, know, yes, yes. can you talk about that? Because I, I came in right after they, they did. They, they, I came in because I was able to get into the toasters because those guys left. So, so can you tell us okay. millions of people right now online? Okay. Like, what was, what that? I mean, tell me what was the toasters <laughs> before that? Well, like, like what happened? The toast, the toasters was established before myself. Those two guys, um, became a thing. Uh, and the record company came after them. Those yanked them out. Too. Yes, they became a they came a group called Unity Three. Right. So they then they were signed to I think it was um one of those major labels. And they were put out to go do their own thing. So Toasters were absent of a front guy. They brought myself in and another guy to do this Unity Two thing. But I could manage the everybody's part. So and the guy wasn't really sure. He was a little bit, he wasn't stable, right? He wasn't really ready for that, right? So I took the rapper, I took the DJ, and I took the singer's part. <laughs> so one man took all of those people's part. And that's how I, you know, I, I came on the scene like that with my introduction with the Toasters, which was like 89. 89 was my say, first stint. I can say from my perspective, um, in what you just said, like now that I got it straight, uh, I, I I already understood what this did to Bucket. I already understood that he would never trust another record label again, mm. ever, and that he had to do his own thing. And in doing that, he became a Duke Reed, Cox and Dodd, like. Yes. Fucking, it's under my control, motherfucker. That part, that part I already understood. But now I'm understanding that, like, in a sense, 
his dedication to making it go on, yeah. and you're getting in the band, he's saved it. Well, I think because, because it saved me too. Unity whatever, unity, whatever, lasted 15 minutes. Yeah. And the Toasters is still around now. And a lot of that is based on your time with the Toasters. I'm just saying Humble. that because there was a very influential band. They had a huge, I know that, I know that the Pilfers didn't get a chance to get, to make the reach, but think about what Bucket did. And he was like, yeah, we're going to Macedonia. I'm like, what? He's like, <laughs> with who? He's like, like with, with whoever puts up with it, man. <laughs> In that way, he was like uh, 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 Chuck a Berry. Pioneer. Of Chuck yeah. Berry and Scott, he yeah. goes to you know, the bands are there, and and yeah. he spread that shit. Yes, yeah. does whatever you know. What, what no, I'm saying, absolutely, absolutely. You have to you have to give him a lot of credit for the endurance. This man, this yeah, for real, to, to pull, like like, yeah. like seriously. He and he took like a lot of bands who were like garage bands, right? Garage bands playing in their house and gave them a platform, which was Moon Records. If not for if not for um, the Toasters, there would be no dance or crashes, as we know it, because he brought them through the front. Pie tasters, um, Mephiscopheles, Scarfalls, and the, the Scarfalls. Yeah. So he took he took all of us I, out I of that. I was in the hood. I'm sorry. I know directly what he did, man. Look, you know what I mean? So I, I, regardless to whatever anybody says, this man, he did a lot. Yeah. So enough respect to Buck. Anyway, you at yeah. Buck. Salute me, Captain. Yeah, man. Every time. <laughs> Valeu, boss. Valeu. Every time. How you say that? What? 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 What's that? Valeu. Valeu is a great Brazilian phrase. Yeah. It Valeu. means thanks, but literally it means was worth it. Had value. It's it's uh, uh it comes from the verb valer, which means yeah. to value. And and it, and they say, Valeu, you hold up, you hold the door from somebody, and they say Valeu. It's because they're like, yeah, man, worth it, worth the effort. Thank you. Like as a way of saying thank you. Less formally. Valeu. Valeu. But depending on the intonation, because you're a singer and you know what I'm talking about, you're a musician. Yes. Depending on the intonation, it's like. It says everything. So volley. So you can say volley, and and and, and, and yeah. that's that's a yeah. cold volley. Yeah, that's yeah. A cold yeah. But you yeah. can say leo, viu? Meu, meu, cara, vou te falar agora que valeu mesmo. Tipo, that's how, yeah, that's yeah, a whole other thing. Yeah. Woo. She's saying this. She's saying what's worth it. Had value so tonight this is all yeah. this is all y'all thank you annie I'm, I'm reading some of your posts here thank you annie james says big up to um the buck lou rudell that looks like uh rebecca but i'm not gonna say it's rebecca lou rudell maybe that's a new uh cinnamon uh anonymous name there you go let me read some of these posts here m m b mighty mighty boston's was my first show but toasters with coolie was was made me fall in love with scott Oh, uh, thank you, James. Oh, ninety nine up. Very yes. influential man. Well, my friend, you very are a very influential influence. man. I see, I see all the work you do, man, and I'd love to get over there. Just don't forget us over here, or when you come to New York, just give me a shout because I, I'd love to work with you too. You know, you know, I came up to New York in March. No way. And I had to cut it short because of some flu business. Yeah. <laughs> Thing called COVID. I was there, and 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 uh, because I have a lot of family in New York. Of course, and, you know, five brothers and sisters, ten nieces, and nephews, and now one. What would you call it? Nephew had a kid. What what do you call it? That's your nephew, nephew, grand nephew. Grand, grand I'm a grand uncle now. Grand uncle, yep. Or great uncle, or <laughs> I'm a terrible uncle, but I'm an uncle. <laughs> Listen, there's <clears throat> there's a budding scene going on here in New York. They're doing a lot of lovers rock too. A lot of lovers rock is going on too, and we need you. 
We need you because we have people like the Love and Paupers in DC, and we have that here in New York. Um, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get her some music, and I'm gonna send her your way. She's a friend of mine. I, I'm sure you know uh, Metro Styli, right? Yeah. Remember the singer? Grab her. Yeah. Grab her. Do some music with her. Do some music. She's got a unique voice. No one, you know, no one like that. I'm just throwing it. I just, I'm throwing it out there because I, I like what she does, and I think she needs some Great. help. I remember that. We, we, yeah. we uh, I was there one time when she was doing a session. Metro Styler was doing a session at like Sony. I don't remember what studio, but uh, Ernest Wrangler. Oh wow! That. Oh wow! And I was there, and she was there with a camera, like filming everybody. Oh wow! She's got footage that nobody's got. <laughs> hey, I'm sure a lot of people have footage. Some people have some footage of mine, which I. Gave them access to do a documentary and they just ran off with the footage. I swear. Back in the day stuff. Like really nice stuff. I there was a the guy there, there was a guy that followed the whole stubborn studio one uh, uh studio one. Uh version city. <laughs> whole stubborn New York version of Studio One, Version City, like uh business. And he he was always there with a camera. And even today, he's like, it's never, it's like he never did anything with it. Uh, I hope he still has a hard drive. I hope, but like, you know, it, he didn't lose it. all that. That footage. Yeah. It's gold. It's priceless now. I'd love to see it. He was there for a lot of shit. His name was Stash. Stash One. You remember this guy? Stash One. Stash One. White guy, black hair and goatee goes with a camera. Always kind of like up on everyone's shit. And he's like, "Who are you?" Like, "Stop, man." <laughs> well, he's got the music. Maybe we have to search him. Search him on face. I mean, the videos. See if we can find him. He's got incredible giga of footage. You know, I, I yeah. When I think about people who were there and, and never put it out, you know, like yeah. I wasn't there to take pictures. I mean, you weren't there to take pictures. You were there to do your thing. Right, exactly. We work in, we work in sound. Like, yeah. we weren't there to be like all clicky, clicky and, and you know, imagey, imagey. Especially not in the studio. Maybe on exactly. stage. Sure, yeah. we, we, we put them on. Yeah, yeah we, 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 you know, in your case, you put out like, Immensely. In my case, it was a pair of, as a bass player, just put on a good shirt. You know? like, no, um, no, that's not true. Show an, show an effort. No, no, no. no, no, no yeah. I, I mean, musically, we, we had our thing, but. Dude, but, you had your thing, man. Definitely, you had your thing. Because when you play it's effortlessly, you was killing it. Like, and you just, you, you just rock a little bit. You know, you had your cool step. And you would just, yo, you would kill it. Kill it. I was like, damn, that dude is so fucking cool. <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah. I was like, yo, my man. I always, you always were a mister. And you're always like, yes, Mr. Ranks. I'm like, nah, dude, you missed the motherfucking right right here, sir. <laughs> Whoa, uh, Mr. Rice. Respect and respect. I mean, you know. Every day, brother. A lot of us, you know, there was a lot of inspiration in our time together on the road. Do you remember uh, when we um we, we did a benefit show in, in Wetlands and we, we it was for Alex, Alex that passed away, he was in the Southern Republico. Uh the the, the sort no the Southern Venezuela. Yeah, he was no no not not the Southern Republico, but it was oh, damn, I forgot the name of his band, but we did a benefit because he passed away. And we on the stage, we just improvised the whole song. I was like, yo, play this for me. And he was like boom 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 boom. And then I said, yo, Sledge, come with this right here, boom, 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 boom. And we did a whole track live. Boom, we did a whole Scar track live, never to be recorded. It was crazy. I and wish it, somebody had that, man. I do remember that moment. That and was, it was crazy. Easy. It was huh? easy. It, it was, was like, easy. Of course. It was like, like, yeah, this is what I do. He's this is what part. Do. I'm like, of course it's that part. The fact, there it is. He says, de facto. That's it. Thanks, James. The James from EST knows. De facto, right. yes. The bassy, the bassy, the bassy we were talking about, Brett Tubin. There you go. Yes. No, 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 no. Brett Tubin is another cat. Brett. Yes. Brett. He was in my band for, for, for a minute. Yes. Brett. Because there's another famous Brett. Yeah, yeah. But Brett, Brett was, Brett was, Brett was, 
Curran. Curran. Brett Curran. Brett Curran. Brett Curran. Curran. Brett Curran. Brett Curran. Basie Brett Curran from the De facto. Yes. 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 That's where yes. I met Jerrica. And that's where Jerrica. I met. You know this is interesting. You know who was in the De facto for like a, you know, a hot second was uh, Gabe. I remember Gabe. From the Daptones. Who became, you know, the uh, uh, anti -ballas. No anti way. Uh, the Daptones Gabe. Yeah, yeah, I know, I, I know of them. I, no. That King's Dave. He goes by Bosco Man, but his real name is Gabe Roth. That motherfucker knew before anybody what was going to work, and he went, he went harder than anybody. Mm. Like, imagine Bucket, but also having, like, a serious, like, Beethoven fucking obsession with music and, and like, musical i don't want to say genius like no genius because he's kind of like the quentin tarantino of music producers he like understood what worked in the 70s and why the fuck wouldn't it work now if he did it right and then mm. we got Amy winehouse and we got sharon jones mm. and fucking the dude this is, has this all is my I'm, respect man this guy has this is all what my I'm respect. telling you you've got that shit right there you've got I'm going to talk to you off the air because I don't want to give away all the secrets. You've got that shit right there and I'm going to talk to you. Yeah, you've got it. You've got it right there where you're sitting right there. You got it. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to cut this short. No, I'm cutting this short. I got, to, I got to keep the secrets. I'm going to tell you what it is. I know, you've got it. I know you know what I'm talking about. I know, yeah. And that's I, because I, gonna... I did a lot of work <laughs> and uh, I had a lot of things to, to throw away from my upbringing. Mm. And uh, I had to tear away a lot of fucking blinders. And I still do. It's my side gig. See that you got it right there. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is now 20. We've actually gone over uh, 20 minutes. It's okay. This has been a Saturday night edition of the Supernova Quarantine Sessions with our special guest, Victor Rice, musical genius, live in Brazil to New York City. This is crazy. See what the internet has done? Loving it. I've been waiting. I've been waiting for humanity to catch up to technology, and it took a fucking pandemic to do it, but here we are. Here we are. Ladies and gentlemen, cop everything that Victor Rice has made and learn. There's a new album out. What's the name of the album? Drink. Drink. Easy Star Records. On Oh, see it there? You're already there. You know what I'm talking about. On Easy Star Records. And listen, we want to thank, thank everyone that contributed to the Alpha Boys um, School Institute in Jamaica. We raised $13,000 which is Ooh, crazy for that, that, that supernova. Yes, we did it on, on this show here. We, we did a marathon. I didn't, uh, know. <laughs> I, did, I didn't know. Yeah, we did We did a, a marathon here a couple of months ago and we raised 13,000 and we made a scholarship for a student in Jamaica. Crazy, we did that. Supernova audience did that. Um, and all the bands contributed. So enough respect to all the bands. It was an international festival from bands Ooh. from Madagascar, from Indonesia, from um, Ireland, from, from um, Brazil, from um, South America, America. I think we had Ooh. maybe one or two Canada. Yeah, we had Canada because we had Chris. Chris well, it's we, That's real. It was That's... six hours. Yeah, we did it. It was it was amazing, and everyone that is watching contributed to that. So I want to thank everyone that was watching and everyone who played and participated. Bought a shirt, bought a dropped a dime, dropped a quarter, dropped a two dollars, dropped a two fifty, whatever hundred. Thank you all so much. We also want to shout out. King Django, and we mm -hmm. want to shout out Chuck Wren, who contributed a lot to the to the whole project, who gave uh, merchandise and support to the to the show. Um, we've got to shout out Johnny Bravo back there that's making it happen all the time. Um, and I also want to apologize to Johnny Bravo, but once again for being late for his show. Uh, I don't want any hard feelings. We had bands from Australia there too. 
I'm just going to say that because you know what I'm saying? Johnny Brown has been holding it down. Enough respect to the man behind the, the Wizard of Oz behind the screen here. And we want to shout out Tim and, and, and um, April for making all of this possible. I have been your host. My name is Cooley Ranks. Check me out on you Monday, Monday and Friday on the car sessions. And I'll see you guys again. Thank you all so much. That has been the man they call Victor Rice. And he's got so much. This is this would this would never end if I don't stop. But we're gonna continue after all of this is over anyway. So you won't get to hear all of that. But thank you all so much and have a splendid good night. Drink some wind, some wine, and so forth. Bye.